Wonderful Friday morning. We are live from digital address GA0992539 in Kokumimli, Accra on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. The show is Joy News Interactive and our social media handles for Facebook, Twitter and Instagram is Joy News on TV. My name is Selinam Ampo. Well, as the saying goes, cleanliness is next to godliness. Are we godly people if our streets are filthy? Well, former President Rawlins has been lamenting on the insanitary conditions that have plagued the parts of the country. According to him, the situation can be best described as retrogressive considering the level of the country's development. Let's listen to him again. Como Ghana, what roads? And then the infrastructure development now Jewaye and yet a Sani Nekema who is investing so much in our infrastructure can it be can it be Como Ghana were roads and then the infrastructure development now Jewaye and yet a Sani Nekema who is investing so much in our infrastructure? Can it be? Can it be in universities? You are here. Can it be? It's sunny. Joy and more. That to the extent that it has, your Ghana, your Accra, your Kumasi, it therefore, this is retrogressive. It's an uncivilized behavior. Time in the past. We were better care health facilities there, and we comported and conducted ourselves in a very responsible, disciplined manner. It was a better reflection of the quality of the human being. Well, you just heard the former president, Jerry John Rawlins. Well, let's speak to a water and sanitation health expert on what it means to fight against insanitary conditions. In Mano Adade is on the line, and we are going to talk about sanitary conditions in the country. What does this mean to fight against poor sanit um, sanitation in the country? Yo, first of all, my name is Adai. Adai, Adai. okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, you know, <laughs> it's very interesting. I mean, you are looking at a country, we, when you travel mm -hmm. to a country, and uh, the first impression that you get is the level of environmental sanitation, the, how clean the place is, mm. not the type of buildings yeah. that you see or the type of roads. True. The type of rules are very, very first class. You have three skyscrapers, very beautiful, and the whole environment is filthy. You still don't respect the people. Mm. I very, I perfectly agree with the former president for saying that this is very, very backward. So no matter how 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 elegantly we dress up, if our environment is is, is not clean, I mean nobody will respect us as as a people. True. So I think it's a very good uh, campaign that he is just you know he just started that we have to look inside ourselves and say that as a people is our environment clean enough and is that utmost respect from, from foreigners. Mm. When you enter somebody's house and the environment is so untidy, I mean you don't want to eat from that house, you see? So it's the same thing if people come from outside the country and they come here and everywhere is filthy, all gashes are choked, everywhere is smelling. Ghana is a filthy people. That is the impression they will take away. Yeah. I very much uh, side with him. Okay. And I think going move, moving forward, we should all reflect on what uh, former President Rollins has just said mm. and think about, about it deeply and say, let's, let's be clean and let's think about a clean Ghana. Okay. But aside him talking and saying that we should learn to be clean, aside the talk, um, mm -hmm. what else can he do to join the campaign against poor sanitation um, conditions in the you country? You know, we have institutions that are supposed to ensure that things are done. Mm -hmm. Apart from these institutions, like the, like the local government, MMDAs, like the Environmental Health Department, and um, they are the ones to execute. And then we also have a ministry, you know, uh, providing guidance through policy and strategy development. They are the ones to ensure that things are done. If people are not behaving well towards the environment, we have institutions to enforce and ensure that they do it. Apart from these institutions, all the rest of us, all that we can do is to talk about okay. what they are supposed to do and they are not doing. 
And in addition to the top, we ourselves also practice what we talk about. So I live in the community. I make sure that my no individual, my personal environment around my house is always clean. The gutter in front of my house is clean. And when I see somebody doing the wrong thing, to I say it. That is all. But other than that, the institutions in charge, the MMDs, have to prioritize sanitation and mm. invest in it. And then I assure you, you know, that this is it's a fact that if you invest a dollar in sanitation, the return is about four times. So, so as a country, when we come to accept this fact and we decide to invest in sanitation, the returns in future is going to be wonderful. Okay. Aside that, it seems like there's a behavioral um, problem for Ghanaians. We have a lot of people who don't care about what happens on the streets. Do you think there's some sort of wind that's going to change our attitudes towards sanitation in the nearest future? Yes, I, I see it. Um, it, 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 it takes uh, government leadership and, 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 and the prioritization. They know the problem. If any government comes and says sanitation is my number one priority, mm -hmm. you see a president always talking about it and always making sure that funds flow you know, towards environmental sanitation. Things will work. But um, it's not just merely talking about it. If you talk about it and you don't invest in it, people will not mind you. It's about attitude. So fine, if it becomes like a, a song that the president is always singing, backed by uh, infrastructure. For instance, we are talking about the fact that people should not litter. Where are the bins? If there are no bins at vantage point, people will always litter because no, many people will not want to pocket their, 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 their what we call rubbish or put, put baggage and carry it home. They will find some bushy area or gutter or somewhere. So let's put the bins, let's make the bins available everywhere, those okay. for the city and those for community. Right. Let us also empty them regularly. All these come with money. If we put enough money for this, I think we should be able to do that. Okay. Wherever you can, there is a bin there. So if you have a piece of paper or a piece of quality in your hand, you just push it in. If you are in a community and there's a big thing there for the community to for, for dumping, I mean, it's always empty, so you go there, it's not full. Sometimes it's embarrassing that you carry your 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 your, your filth from the house. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people put them in their car boots to go to the, the rubbish uh, container for them to be turned away and because the, the, the container is full. So you have to drive back or carry back home the filth. Yeah. Such a person, the slight opportunity, they will push it under some uh, shrub somewhere and then find their way. Yeah. So these facilities are very basic for uh, and fundamental for our environmental cleanliness. The more we talk, if we fail to provide the bins and we fail to empty the bins on family basis, people are always going to behave the way they do. Okay. Thank and you. And then number two, enforcement. If the laws are there and we don't enforce, then people don't take a serious. They know the law is there, that you don't have to litter around. So if somebody litters and then the person is not arrested, Mm. Uh, the person is arrested for only a chief or an honorable minister or MP who and plead on his behalf, and this is just sanitation way, as some can way, so they just leave it. Then others will also feel free to do it. So All right. We also have to be firm with enforcing the law. Thank you very much, Emmanuel yeah. Adai, the sanitation expert, for that enlightenment. Now let's hop onto Facebook to find out what people have to say about the sanitation conditions in the country. And Osman Tishi says, I support, with, I support him, sanitation is poor, and sanitation in Ghana is poor. And Charles Harrison, Uman, says, I'll make Accra the cleanest city in Africa. He's quoting Nana Kufado, our president. And Shamo Nesta says, all citizens are indisciplined and have, and have I don't care syndrome. On to another important issue. Government is accusing the opposition National Democratic Congress of a double standard in its call for a temporary ban on the importation of arms for private use. The NDC in a statement said it was alarmed the government permitted the import of the consignment for my... The Information Minister, Kojo Nkrumah, has named the NDC's James Agalga 
as the one who gave the approval for importation of the cash for private use when he was Deputy Interior Minister days before handing over to the NPP. What do you make of this back and forth between the two parties? Well, let's hop onto Facebook to find out what you had to say. And Kobe Abdul says, this is simply NPP. This is simply MPP is up to evil. What prevents them from cancelling the permits if they are not up to something? And Ronald says, are we in a war zone? This importer is wicked, Pam. And Prince Osei Krapa says, what's back and forth in this? Some, somebody hypothetically accuses the other of allowing something to be done, knowing very well that he rather gave the permit for it to be done and you expect and you expect them to be quiet about it what kind of hypocritical politicians do we have in this country when you are in power everything is good but in opposition is the other way even in opposition ndc is a failure frank boating says we voted for him so he should be on his post and stop making ndc always tell him what to do and Cantona Eric says, who is in power now, JMO Akufuado. NPP must stop blame game and take responsibilities of their own failures. If you commission a project, you take credits. But if something bad happens, then you turn around and blame the previous government hypocrites. And Kwame Minipa says, whether NPP or NDC gave the permit, it doesn't matter to us Ghanaians. Seize them and destroy everything, period. And Kofi Afodofe says, your president said all contracts and negotiations Mahama awarded will be reviewed. So why didn't you review that, funny government? I now know that the NPP government is a failed government. Must you always blame NDC for everything? And comments go on and on. And Samuel Soshi says, I thought this government suspended all contracts by previous governments when they came into power. Why didn't you invoke the license? You stopped the engineer and planners. Why can't you stop arm um, importation? Where lies your responsibility? We are not gullible. If it favors you, you take the credits. If not, the other must be mentioned. Our eyes are open and our brains are functioning too. And Francis actually says this shows clearly that this NPP government has nothing to offer Ghanaians. After three years in office, you guys are still blaming the past government. Your level of incompetence is just too much. Pack your bags and leave the presidency immediately before I lose my temper on you. And Aliu Mahama says, if it's true, Honorable Agalga signed that, that why didn't they withdraw it when they came in? Just as they suspended contracts awarded by the same government. But per the letter, the permission was granted to import hunting shotguns and take delivery of same. They were hunting guns, that we, the same hunting guns that we saw. This government can't run away from this. And James says, hmm, Ghana, if you people can cancel road, cancel, sorry, cancel road contracts, school block contracts, why not this one, which is talking about guns? Mind you, those guns are more powerful than what our grandfathers are using in the villages to hunt grass cutters and so on. Charlie, these guys will kill us all in the coming 2020 election or... Well, let's take a short breather and we'll be back for more stories. Welcome back from that short break. You're still watching Joy News Interactive. Now, the series finale of Game of Thrones is almost upon us. Thing that is just going to tell us that the end of our journey to Westeros. Uh, I'm sure most of us will feel bad. We each have our own dream of the end, but unfortunately, we can't control the plot of the series. While some of us are anticipating the end, some fans have begun petitioning HBO to create an alternate version of the show's eighth and final season. Most of us 
hated the penultimate episode, but love it or hate it, all things do come to an end. And here is Emily Clark singing about her character in the TV series. George R. Martin meets Chris Martin. What could go wrong? Game of what now? Ay, ay, ay. I'm a Rastafarian, Targaryen. I got some dragons and they are very scary. And been here and there and then I've been everywhere again. Rastafarian, Targaryen. Call me the nearest Targaryen when you want to reach me. And if you feel the love, then you can call me Kali. See, got so many names. I'm queen of the Anne. Queen of the Marine, yeah, you can kiss me sandals. I'm a Rastafarian, Targaryen. I got some dragons and they are very scary. And been here and there and then I've been everywhere again. Rastafarian, Targaryen, call me the nearest Targaryen when you want to reach me. And if you feel the love, then you can call me Kali. See, got so many names. The mother of dragons singing right about her character. Now it's time for us to go to social media to talk about what fans had to say about the finale and what they have learned from the TV series. And Darren McGovern says, all these hashtag Game of Thrones so-called fans complaining about season 8, it's been bigger, longer and better than the rest. And, and has to be in sight and not dragged out. I think it's been a bang on. I call Sansa to sit on the throne. And Philip says he, he has learned never to underestimate anyone on this planet, irrespective of his or her status quo. And Gomez says, treat everyone with respect and be careful around everyone because you don't know their true intentions for you. And that's his lesson. Jabat Masahudu says, the, there's no middle ground in life. You either win or you lose. And Dawda Abdul says, never trust anybody. See what happened to Lord Stark. And Isaac Kumse says, he's hoping that Danny rules and John becomes warden of the North and I are hunting. And Kafu is replying to Isaac. He says, Danny will never rule. John will be warden of the north anyway, but Bran will be king of the seven kingdoms. And Romeo Edward said Danny will be killed by Aya, hopefully, and Sansa rules Winterfell. Akram says people were hurt by the death of Sir Jorah Mammoth, House of Friend Zone, but at least he died a king. A king of friends on hashtag Game of Thrones. And Raisang says, I have to disagree with people who argue that the episode 5 is badly written. The fact that Danny turned into a mad queen is pretty reasonable as she's been defeated multiple times on the previous episode. Plus, she just lost her best friend and a baby. Hashtag Game of Thrones. Our Friday shows are never complete without our most watched videos of the week. From the beginning, let's start with the first one. And 198,000 views, 201,000 reactions, 102,000 comments, and 2,646 shares. It is a report on some ammunition imported into the country. And in the second spot for the most watched videos of the week, it is the former President John Dramani Mahama explaining his boots for boots comment. He says he was emotionally charged by the Ayawaso West violence. That video had 95,000 views, 105,000 reactions, 918 comments, and 843 shares. Now, Let's go to our last but not least. It is a video of Reverend Upuni Frimpon speaking about the CID boss. He says our leaders must be serious with us. The video had 29,000 views, 682 reactions, 208 comments, 497 shares. Let's take a look at it. You must know that people are hurt. So it's not as simple as, oh, you didn't understand me. She spoke English language. 
that we know where the girls, as I speak to you now, we know where the girls are. That is English language. It's not Greek. So coming back to say that you didn't understand me by now, either the IGP or somebody should have given apology to some people, some Ghanaians, that sorry, uh, we didn't mean this. So it should not be business as usual. Oh, you don't know, you did not understand me, it's your fault. People are deeply hurt. You, you, I have children, and if this story, and I take the children as my own, please, thank God. In fact, this issue has been picked by the media, even more than uh, by the security agencies, the way some of you, and consistently. And whatever hope somebody wants to give to us must be sustained. It, it's not be we are up and down, oh, we know them, oh, we are sorry, we, we don't know where that, that kind of thing shouldn't be. And by now, I far seriously uh, want some even serious apology to be given to, to Ghanaians and the p particular uh, 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 families. But uh, our leaders must be more serious with us. Now it's time for us to do our video of the day. For our video of the day, these beautiful models decided to change it when they got on the runway. Colors of Africa showed these beautiful women. Instead of modeling, they decided to do it with a dance. Let's take a look at them. Definitely a colorful Africa. We always know how to show up and show out. It's time for us to wrap up on the show. You've been watching Joy News Interactive with me, Selina Ampo. Enjoy your weekend as I would. Thank <laughs> you.